Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on the 4th of July. Good to have you here. We have Larry Brown. Happy 4th. Yeah, singer, songwriter, storyteller, you name it, you do it. Oh, sure, sure. sure. So you, you have a uh, a 4th of July story for us today? This is a 4th of July story. Okay. Yes. And what's, what's the name of it? Well, uh, it's, it's What Liberty Bell, or subtitled... What's the relationship between the Liberty Bell and wheat? What Liberty Bell, or subtitle, <laughs> what's the relationship between the Liberty Bell and wheat? Sure. We have it for you right now All with right. Larry Brown. Well, most of us are familiar with the story of the Liberty Bell, the one that's housed in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and been under the care of our National Park Service since 1948. But we may not know all some of the details that the original bell was forged in 1751 in London, was shipped to Philadelphia for a commemoration, broke, and they melted it down and recast it in the United States. So the one we know now was actually recast in the United States. Now, it was originally the Pennsylvania Colony Bell, later became the Pennsylvania State House bell. But it was uh, put together in, in uh, 1751 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of William Penn's Charter of Privileges, the statement that really gave the freedoms and liberties that was the Pennsylvania colony, later, of course, the state of Pennsylvania. And they chose to put on an inscription from the Hebrew text, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10, which says, Proclaim liberty throughout the land and unto all the inhabitants thereof. King James uh, Version. And that was because <clears throat> in the, the book of Leviticus, there is the story of every 50 years, the Hebrew people were supposed to stop and celebrate what they called the Jubilee year, in which uh, debts were canceled, uh, land was given back to original owners, and slaves were freed. So it was that concept of liberty that matched with William Penn's concept of what he wanted to create in Pennsylvania. Now, the association with the 4th of July is a bit, well, that's part of the story. Because we don't think that the bell was actually rung on the 4th of July. Namely because the signing of the Declaration of Independence on the 4th was not made public until the 8th of July. Now, the bell had been used as the, as the town bell, the colony bell, for news and reports and emergencies and so on. It's possible that it might have been rung maybe on July 8th when news got out of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, but there's no real evidence of that. However, two important influences made the Liberty Bell the Liberty Bell. And the first was in the 1830s when abolitionists, those who were working for uh, freeing people from slavery, with that inscription and the concept of liberty, dubbed it the Liberty Bell. And it was used then as a symbol, as an icon of the hope to free all people that were enslaved. But the real influence came probably in, uh, well, I wouldn't say real influence, but a more important, perhaps more in, in the public attention's influence came in 1847 when a story was written by George Lippard called Fourth of July, 1776. And it tells the story of an old man and a boy and the ringing of the bell on the Fourth of July. And that story then <laughs> widely circulated across the country. And the association with freeing of slaves and of this story it became the Liberty Bell. And after the Civil War then, it was uh, in the 1880s, clear up until the beginning of the 20th century, the bell uh, made its way around the country, created up and displayed. But there is another Liberty Bell that I want to tell you about. And to back up this story, I have to go to the 1870s, when Mennonites, who were German-speaking, had been part of the Russian Empire, had gotten their freedom and came to the United States. And many of them went out to south-central Kansas, particularly around the communities of, uh, of uh, uh, McPherson and, and other communities there, but a little town of Gossel. And there was a group there that came from Alexandervol in Russia and settled there, established a Mennonite church in 1874. 
Well, as preparations were being made for the centennial of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, farmers in central Kansas were asked to bring wheat, and it was going to be used to decorate a replica of the Liberty Bell. And they brought grass and what was called broom corn stalks at that time and gourds and decorated it. Now jump ahead to 1976, the bicentennial of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the Smithsonian Institution wanted to kind of recreate what had happened in 1876 and asked the Mennonites to come and bring wheat to display with the Liberty Bell. Now, the Mennonites were the folks who brought wheat to Kansas. It was that hard winter wheat, turkey red wheat that they had used in Ukraine, and they brought wheat and it was spreading throughout Kansas. But then in 1975, they said, no, why don't you make a Liberty Bell? And people in the communities of Gessel and Heston, Kansas, planned, created, and designed a framework with wire, covered it with wheat, woven wheat, the inscription with wheat seed, made this incredible Liberty Bell six feet by six feet that then went to D.C., uh, and was displayed for two years and then came back to now where it resides in the Mennonite Heritage and Agricultural Museum in Gossel, Kansas. And I was there over Memorial Day weekend <coughs> visiting with friends and saw the bell, spent a couple of hours in this wonderful museum. But for the Mennonites, that same sense of liberty, the freedom they had as immigrants to come to this country to grow and prosper, and their contributions, of course, of wheat to our livelihood and economy all goes back to that original concept of liberty by which the bell was forged to commemorate William Penn. What a story. What a story. And you saw the wheat Liberty Bell. Yes, you can go online if you want and see photos of it, but it's called the Wheat Liberty Bell and on display there. And, and it's six feet by six, six feet? Six feet by six feet, yes. And that's the size of the original Liberty Bell? Approximately, yeah, approximately. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Declaration of Independence was not signed, you said, until July No, 8th. it was signed on July 4th. It wasn't made public until, until July, July 8th. 8th. But did they yeah. all sign it at the same time? Well, well I, I, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure that that happened. Yeah, because I thought I read somewhere that it was not signed by everyone and at that the same time. that may have been why it, it wasn't several days. formally proclaimed yeah. until July 8th. Well, that's an interesting story, Larry. I appreciate you sharing that with us on this 4th of July. I hope you have a happy and safe 4th of July. Well, thank you. And remember what our country really is all about, and that's freedom for everyone. Liberty. Liberty. Right. <laughs> thank you very much. Larry. You're welcome. If you want uh, more information on Larry... Uh, Brown story at hotmail.com is the best way to get a hold of me. Okay. Thank you. And again, happy 4th of July to all of you. Bye-bye.